Well, apparently the Overton window can be a very strange thing. What we saw happening was the Overton window jumping back to an earlier period. If you don't know what the Overton window is, it's basically society can change at a certain rate. And the way that it's been going, and we've been heading more towards the left for a while, and people will try to push that Overton window a little bit more just so society becomes just a little bit more liberal, a little bit more liberal. And if you try to push it too far, the Overton window will jump back to an earlier period. Now, this isn't exactly the best way to describe the Overton window. I'm sure that people will say, well, technically, I'm just trying to give a general idea, right? Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making this entire video about the definition of the Overton window, okay? So, but it seems that the jump back to an earlier period was more like a slingshot to the left. And that period of going to the right is stretching that, that slingshot and it's just been let go. And people have been saying, you know, people like David Duke saying, oh, we've had a paradigm shift. Yeah, and it's not in your direction. Now, I've, I've always spoken against the idea that some people push forth of, well, closed minds should come with closed mouths. And I've always thought that was stupid. I've argued against that since the early 90s, you know? And I've been on so many political forums. I was on political BBSs on forums in the 80s. You know, I've, I've been doing the, the, this kind of thing for a long time. And I've always tried to allow for everyone to have their say. That's been my thing. I didn't get good at being on camera, though, until you know, 2009, 2010, and then I, I started getting better at it, and now, I can, I, now I'm just comfortable in front of the camera. But, uh, yeah, I've always spoken against that whole, that whole idea of closed minds should come with closed mouths. I think they should come with open mouths so we can show, we can show the light to that closed mind, and it can be properly criticized for what it is, not for some sort of label that you want to give it. So, anyway, so I've, I've been anti-censorship for a long time. What we're seeing right now, the way we're seeing this country change, is a pro-censorship sort of thing. And I'm, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm having to just accept that this is the way that it is. It's been hard to accept, but at the same time, if I go for something, a very selfish mindset, a very selfish mindset, because I am on the left, okay, if I go with a very selfish mindset, Part of me is celebrating like I've never celebrated. When I when I saw the uh, all the counter protests to the uh, to what is being considered an alt right movement about free speech, um, and all the people you know basically saying down with fascism, it 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 part part of me is filled with joy. The part that saddens me is that there aren't more people on the left who will will argue for anti-censorship, who will take an anti-censorship approach. There aren't enough on the left that are taking an anti-censorship approach. I'm disappointed that an anti-censorship march, a free speech march, is automatically put into the alt-right category. I think that part is 
awful. I think that's awful. But the outcome, all these people coming together, is cool. Now, I do have to question some things about all these people coming together. Because this time around, even on the Washington Post, I think it was, it was either the Washington Post or New York Times, even they were saying that people were being bussed in. Now, I mean, you, you got to wonder who's paying for that. You know, th- th- this is something that, I mean, the major news network saying that people were being bussed in. That's, that's a little bit questionable. The outcome, though, the outcome, and all these people speaking against fascism, I think, it, it, like I said, that many people coming together, no matter for, you know, no matter how they're coming together, whether it's they're being bussed in because they're, it's being paid for by some people or not, it's still, feel, part of me is filled with joy. I think, I try to think about how would I have felt about this when, if, let's say, who I was in, when I was in my 20s, especially my early 20s, if I would have been put into a time machine and brought to today, how would that, how would that, at the time, Brandon Fowler, have felt? Just so you know, I had my name legally changed in 2014 to Kazum Fowler, but... So how would Brandon Fowler have felt? I think I would have been overjoyed at all the outpouring of support. We are seeing a paradigm shift, major, and it's not towards the the alt-right. It's amazing to me that we can have I'm going to say the worst president in the past hundred years. And is so far on the right. And yet socially, we've ended up going more towards the left. That's very interesting. Now, there are some people who I know will be very concerned about that. Um, We just have to look at Canada to see what some of that could mean. I'll say this about Trump, you know, if it, however long the rest of his presidency lasts, I pro- I imagine it probably won't even make it till December, but um it, but if he, you know, lasts longer than that, he's going to be a lame duck president. He's not going to get anything accomplished now. There's there's just no way, you know. Just making sure it's still recording. There's no way. He's, 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 he's kind of done. His, his presidency is done. Um, whether or not he remains president or not, his presidency is done. He's, he's not going to get anything accomplished. At least it seems that way. <clears throat> but That's a weird sound, and I want to see what it is. Anyway, I don't really have much more to say.